Okay, hi everyone. Today I'm going to tie the uh, DNA clouser that um, I use primarily for flathead, but you know I've caught quite a few species on it from uh, brim. Uh, I've caught salmon, trevally. Uh, you know a lot of lot of fish that'll take bait fish will um, will take this. I've even caught um, a jewfish on it. Um, so. Um, let me run through the materials quickly. It's a fairly easy one to tie, especially for those that have tied clouses before. Uh, but if you haven't tied clouses, this is probably a good um, good place to start. So let me run through the materials. I'm using a 6.0 thread, just a white 6.0 thread. You can use um, flat wax nylon. Uh, that's not a problem. The material is um, this DNA material. Um, the colours I'm going to use are just the white and olive. Um, so, yep, yeah, that's the, the flash. I mean, any, any other flash that's got, um, you know, that sort of look to it will work as well. Sparkle Flash 10 will work, but it'll uh, tail wrap a lot more because it doesn't have the other fibres to keep it straight like the DNA flash does. Um, the hook is a Daiichi 2546. That's a size 2. Um, for flathead I usually tie them on a size 2, I tie some on size 4s for, for brim as well. Um, and just using the old uh, dumbbell eyes, these are real eyes plus that have already got the, um, the eye embedded into the dumbbell. Um, so you don't have to uh, muck around with that and um, you know they're resin eyes so they're never going to come out. Okay so first step is just to wind the thread on to the front of the hook and place your eye on. Now I put the eye on at an angle to start off with um, just to get the first wraps on it. Um, so yeah, I'll put about 10 to 12 wraps around that eye uh, then take a look at it and make sure it's in place. Just make sure you've got enough room between the eyes and the front of the hook there um, to tie in your material when you, you go to tie it in. Okay so then um, just do the same, holding the eye straight and you know, tying 10 to 12 wraps again um, around there. So some people do the figure eight. Um, I find doing it across, then across the other way, um, much better in terms of uh, you know, your eyes aren't going to move quite as much. So what I do after I've done that is I will take the thread and wrap it between the eyes and the the shank of the hook and what that does is really tightens up the thread around the eyes of the hook um, you know and then they're not going to move so I'm you know putting a bit of pressure on that and it's not moving but one thing you want to do is just check that it's straight now what I usually do is I let the thread hang and that tells me where the straight line is from the hook and then I make sure the hook is straight in the vise and then that the eyes look straight on the hook. Um, some people tell you to take the hook out of the vise and lay it on the table and make sure the hook um, is sitting up s straight from the eyes. I don't usually do that. I just, as I said, use the uh, the thread as, dropping as a um, straight line. Okay, I head cement then just around the eyes like that, uh, but, you know, just to help keep the eyes in place. Now, you know, it's nearly impossible to get and you know set of dumbbell eyes on a hook that's never ever going to move you could probably epoxy them in but even then the epoxy is going to crack at some point especially once you catch start catching a few fish so do the best you can like i said head cement will help doing it the way i did it in terms of tying it on at an angle will certainly um get the um the eyes on to the the shank of the hook fairly tightly okay so the next step is the first bit of material um now again one of the good things about the um, this type of clouser over the bucktail clouser is you can put the material on and then fold it back on itself. And what that does, what that means, is you're not going to be able to pull it out. Um, whereas with bucktail, because you just got to tie it in at the tips of the bucktail, uh, sometimes you'll find once you've got a few fish, the bucktail starts to fall out, and you end up with a with a clouser with uh, less and less material each time you you get a fish. So. Um, so what I do is, um, you know, just put the material up under the thread like that, um, then tie a couple of wraps around there. 
don't go all the way to the eye of the hook because as you, at the finish what you want to be able to do is get a neat head and if you go right to the eye of the hook it becomes very difficult to get that taper that you want. Okay so materials in, uh, just wrap it back on itself as I said and a couple of wraps around the front there then bring the thread up behind the eyes and holding the material the whole time because what you want to do is you want to make sure the material sits on top of the hook and doesn't start to wrap around the shank of the hook so just holding the material up like that and then wrapping back now for these ones I wrap back past the the hook um, point um, and then you know a few wraps back up and down um, just to hold that all in place now the reason I Make sure I wrap back to about, you know, just before the barb of the hook there is you don't want um, the, the material to be able to, you know, come back around and, um, and tail wrap. And by doing that, it, it sort of extends it down past the, uh, the bend of the hook a lot more, makes it uh, less likely to, to wrap at the tail. Okay, so bring the, hook, the thread back to the front towards the eye of the hook, and that's the bottom part of the fly done. So we just turn that over. And then we get our um, top colour, whatever we want that to be. In this case, I'm using olive, um, which is my favourite combination. The uh, white over uh, under and then the olive over the top. Um, so then just the same same thing. Put the, the material in the under the thread and a few wraps. Again, trying not to get too close to the eye of the hook. So you can see how much space I've left a you know, millimetre or two there between the material and the eye of the hook uh, to finish the head off. Then push it down with your thumb um, so that it sort of spreads between the eyes and a few wraps around there. Any loose ones, just make sure you pull them back as you go and then create the head. So let me just move some of this material back and you can start to see that taking shape. Um, and then I just um, turn it on a bit of an angle and create the head just by, you know, wrapping the thread up and down the, the hook eye between the eyes of the, the dumbbell eyes and the eye of the hook and we're just about there so you can see there the um, if I zoom in a little bit on that maybe it might be a little bit easier um, you can see there the head of the, the fly has got a nice taper to it and um, then just whip finish off as you always would Now, you know, do a few um, turns on the whip finish because, again, this thing's going to be sitting on the bottom for, for most of its uh, time in the water and uh, sand and mud and weed can be fairly uh, heavy duty on the, uh, the thread. So just do a bit of head cement and quite often I'll put a coat of uh, nail polish or... Um, you know, sometimes even a epoxy if I'm, you know, going out snag bashing or whatever. But that's pretty much it. Let me just take it out of the vise and um, give you a look at the, the finished fly. Now, it's fairly sparse, but that's the way I like to tie them. Um, you know, I don't think you need a lot of material, even on the bucktail. You know, sometimes I see um, clouses that, I, in my opinion, have way too much material on them. But if I just hold that there, that's it. So quite a good bait fish look, has a nice shimmer in the water, um, the white goes semi-translucent but you get that flash and this, the good thing about the DNA fibre is it's got that sort of a scaly look that you can see there. Um, so yeah that, that's why I use the DNA over any of the other sorts of flash, that and the fact that it's got those little tiny fibres that help keep the material straight. Anyway, that's it. Short and simple, um, but a very effective fly, especially on, on flathead on um, you know, bright sunny days or, or um, you know, even, even slightly cloudy. That flash really sort of um, shimmers in the water. So give it a go. Thanks, guys.